Hello, so you are looking at our Comparing Art in Different Cultures packet. Uh, the front page and the back of the first page we will do together as a class, but you will need to write your name and the day you have art, day A, day B, day C. And then we're going to open up to our second page. So this is our Day of the Dead section. So I have a bunch of sugar skulls on this page. For this page, this is page is just kind of like a color sheet. It's small, detailed items, so you might want to use colored pencil on this page. That would be okay. On the page behind the sugar skulls, we have some more sugar skulls. But then what I'd like you to do is pick some designs and motifs from these skulls above or the skulls on this back page and draw some of your favorite patterns or designs that you see on the skulls that you like just to give you some practice what you like Notice that I did it in pencil. When the designs were colored in all black, I filled it in with pencil. Um, when they were not, and they were mostly white, I left them mostly white. And so I want you to do enough of different patterns and motifs that you like it filling inside this rectangle with pencil and shading. So now we're gonna talk about symmetry. So, so um, our sugar skulls are symmetrical. We draw a line down the middle of them. They're the same on both sides. So we are gonna practice some symmetry. Symmetry is the quality of being made up of exactly similar parts facing each other or around an axis. So this is an example of around an axis. Here's the center and we have these identical items over and over again going around in a circle. This one the, is the, an example of having two halves. So the line of symmetry would be here, this side and this side are the same. This is an example of radial symmetry again, the center part with the same things going around. This would just be a line of symmetry and this is also a line of symmetry. A line of symmetry is the imaginary line where you could fold the image in half and both halves would be exactly the same. Draw the line of symmetry in these shapes. So you're gonna draw with your pencil the line of symmetry This one is not quite symmetrical because the hair is different. But with radial symmetry, you can have a line of symmetry going horizontal. You can have a line of symmetry going diagonal. So these parts of the snowflake are radial symmetry and uh, lines of radial, the lines of symmetry. So assume these are symmetrical, draw the other half. So with your pencil, you're going to practice drawing the other half. Now, of course, we are not machines. We're not gonna be able to do this perfectly, but you want to try your best to kind of match it up. So that's not quite half, qu quite correct because the bottom of this is too short. So I needed to bring that further over. So I would erase. So you can look at the length of the line and try to match it on the other side. And then can you name some other things that are symmetrical? So you would just write these in words and letters on these lines. So four things that are symmetrical. So turning to the next page, symmetry, use a pencil to draw each, draw the line of symmetry through each image. So we know that this is, has only one line of symmetry. This is radial symmetry, so it has multiple lines of symmetry. Your lines of symmetry should meet in the middle. I didn't do a very good job with this, so I'm gonna erase and try again. That's not very neat. All right, and then a sugar skull, the line of symmetry. Here we're gonna draw the other half of a sugar skull, the other half of a bug.
This requires looking at proportions, looking at how far up the bo body this is and how thick it is in order to get it right. So when I had um, did this leg, I brought this top part of the leg down too far and then I realized it didn't match up and actually it's still a little too far. So if I take and just draw an imaginary line across, it probably, well, I guess it could end there. Um, but you want to use it to help guide. So the, this part of the arm goes up and stops at the antenna. So this antenna is probably a little bit too long. And then this arm comes up to the antenna. A lot of detail. I don't expect it to be perfect. Just try your best. Okay. Alright, so now we're going to talk about shape. We've been talking about symmetry in this packet. Now we're going to talk about shape. A shape is made when a line encloses an area. So this is just a line. This, it's, it has to curve around and close itself up in order to be a shape. Shapes are flat, two-dimensional areas outlined by a line. There are two main categories of shapes, geometric and organic. So that's what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on geometric shapes and organic shapes. Geometric shapes are characterized by simple, rectangular, and curvular lines. They are shapes that generally have their own names, such as square, circle, or oval. So, they have their own names. So, you're going to draw some more geometric shapes above this line. So, I'm going to add a rectangle, an oval, a pentagon, an octagon, so come up with some geometric shapes that you can practice drawing above this line. And then organic shapes are characterized by being more free-flowing, natural shapes. Organic shapes do not have their own names. So those would be like leaf shapes, puddle shapes, All right, and so now we're on to butterflies. So we've talked so far in this packet about symmetry, sugar skulls, geometric and organic shapes, and now we're going to talk about butterflies and work on the butterflies. I want you to use a green crayon to trace or color in the geometric shapes. So look at each butterfly and see where some geometric shapes are, and I want you to color those in, or you can outline them or circle them. These look very circular to me. Some of them may be a little less circular, but close enough. Use a violet crayon to trace any organic or freeform shapes that you have. So, I mean, a lot of these shapes on each butterfly are organic and freeform. You don't have to color in every single one of them. Just enough to show me you understand what organic shapes are. And then the last page related to the Day of the Dead is a word find. So you can work on this whenever you have some extra time in class. I'm looking for these words down here mixed up in the word jumble up here. Okay, so now we are looking at Native American totem poles. We're going to come back 
um, and talk about the same topic again of symmetry. And so I want you to draw a line of symmetry down the totem pole. A nice straight line. If you miss the line of symmetry, like I missed it starting here, go back and erase. It's just one line, so let's put forth some effort and try to keep it as straight down the middle as possible. There we go. It's a quick and easy start. All right, so now we're going to talk about color families and color theory um, with totem poles, and it's going to go along with our totem poles. So we're going to talk about different color families. The first color family we're going to talk about is the most important one, the primary colors. Primary colors are red, blue, and yellow, and you can make any color in the world by mixing these three colors plus black and white. So if you only have red, yellow, and blue paint, and you have black and white, you can make any other color that you could ever want or need. So that's what's really cool about the primary colors. So I want you to find a blue, yellow, and red crayon. I don't want you to just find something that looks like blue. I want you to make sure you find the blue. And then I want you to take your time and color in neatly, staying inside the area of this circle. No scribbling. I'm coloring back and forth different directions to make it look more flat and less scribbly. Fill in all the white spaces. Okay, the secondary colors. Secondary colors are created by mixing the primary colors. So remember, we can make any other color in the world with these three colors in black and white. The secondary colors are purple, orange, and green. So I want you to use the primary colors to try to make purple, orange, and green in the center. So what you're going to do is take your crayon and you're gonna color in the whole circle what it's labeled. So it's labeled red. I'm not pressing real hard, I have more of a medium pressure. And then the bottom circle is blue. And so you're gonna color in this whole circle with blue and where the two circles overlap should create that secondary color and it does, it creates purple. So now I'm gonna to come to my next section, my next overlapping circles. The top one is red, bottom one is yellow. And where they overlap creates orange, one of the secondary colors, and then finally yellow and blue. All right, so now we have the secondary colors, purple, orange, and green. Warm colors. Warm colors are red, yellow, and orange. They make you think of warm things such as sunlight and fire. Warm colors appear to advance or come forward in a picture. So you're going to get red, yellow, and orange, and you're going to color in these triangles with red, yellow, and orange. So make sure the side of the crayon says red, orange, and yellow. Cool colors are blue, green, and purple. They make you think of water, sky, ice, and snow. Colors, cool colors appear to recede or go back into a picture. Analogous colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And so what I would start with is the red, the blue, and the yellow, coloring in the circle completely. Now the color wheel is the rainbow in a circle shape. That's what it is. It's a rainbow in the circle shape. So let's start with that. Let's start with that. And you know what? Let's use um, the, the edge of our paper to come up with the order of the rainbow. The order of a rainbow is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, 
and violet. Sometimes people include indigo between the blue and the violet, but we're just gonna stick with these three. So if you can imagine that the blue, that this line bends and curves and comes around and touch, this purple's gonna touch the red. So what it wants to do, what it's asking you to do is choose the colors that are on either side of red on the color wheel. And this is the rainbow, the color spectrum, it's also the color wheel. So you're gonna put orange in one circle because we know orange is next to red. And you're gonna, the orange and the red's gonna overlap and make a color called red orange. And then the purple, if this curved around, the purple would be touching. So you're going to do purple or violet in the second circle. And when the purple and the violet overlap, they create a color called red violet. And so blue, what's on either side of blue? It's purple and green. So one circle you're going to color purple. When the purple overlaps the blue, it's called blue violet. And when the green overlaps the blue and mixes together, it is called blue green. And you can see those colors made when they're overlapped. And then the two colors on either side of yellow, it's green and orange. So when yellow and green mix together, they create a color called yellow green. And when yellow and orange mix together, they create a color called yellow orange. All right, so there is analogous colors. And now I want you to create some color families of your own. So you can use every color in the crayon bin and you can put them, mix them together and put them together in sets of three. And then I want you to give your color family a name. So let's see, I'm going to pick some blues and a little bit of green. So I like these two colors together. And let's do a darker color. So I like these colors together. So I'm gonna color these in the circle. So you get to make up your own color families and you get to make up the names for them. So the names should be obviously school appropriate, but they can be any name you want them to be. All right, and these three colors, I need to think of a name. These three colors remind me of the ocean. So I'm gonna name this color family Deep Blue Sea. Okay, so I need to pick some more. These three colors together remind me of candy. So I'm gonna name this color family Sweet, Crunchy, Candy. Okay. All right, and these three colors together remind me of a snow day when there's snow on the ground and um, we've scraped the sidewalk so you can see the sidewalks and the sky is bright blue. So I'm gonna name this snow day. Okay, so now you've created some of your own color families. We've talked about analogous color families. We have talked about warm and cool color families and primary and secondary color families. And you've gotten to create your own color families. So the last page for this um, culture, Native Americans, is also another word find. So you're gonna look for these words mixed up and hidden in this jumbled letter. And you'll do that when you finish something early and you have a little bit of extra time. All right, and so now we're on to the African culture and specifically their masks. On this first page in our packet, I want you to draw a line of symmetry on three of the masks. So you're gonna take your pencil and choose whatever three that you wanna draw a line of symmetry through.
All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna review again geometric and organic shapes. You're gonna use a purple crayon to trace the geometric shapes. So you're gonna find your purple crayon, and wherever you see a geometric shape, a shape that has a name like a triangle, a circle, a square, a rectangle, an oval, you are going to trace those. This is a semicircle, half circle. Use an orange crayon to trace the organic shapes. So I'm going to find my orange. And there's probably lots of organic shapes to trace around, so I don't need to trace around all of them, just some of them. Okay. The element of texture. There are two types of texture. Tactile texture or touch texture. Texture that you can feel. So when you're petting an animal like a dog or a cat, you can feel the soft fur. And then there's visual or eye texture. Texture that you can see but you can't touch. So if we try to create some texture on this paper, it's probably going to be more visual texture because when you touch the paper, it's smooth. It's but we're gonna try to create some textures using some texture rubbing plates. So those have actual touch texture, tactile texture, but we're gonna use them to create some visual texture. Okay, so we have a couple of different types of texture rubbing plates. We have some that are colored and they're more square. And then we also have some clear ones and um, Texture plates clearly have, and sometimes not so clearly, have a top and a bottom. So let's start with these. There is a rim around the edge, and you know you're looking at the top if you set the rim down and it lines and it sits on the table. If you flip it over and the rim sits up off the table, there's a little bit of a gap, then this is upside down. You want to turn it to where this ridge, the edge, is sitting flat to the table. And then with these clear ones, basically you just kind of have to feel them and see which side is bumpier. And the side that's the bumpiest is the side that goes up. So what I want you to do is just practice using these. So you're going to, careful not to rip this page out of your packet, we're going to put a texture rubbing plate underneath our paper and you're going to color in this box with, a with the rubbing plate underneath and you will see that that tactile texture that's under the paper, when we color the paper, it creates this visual texture. And then try to do a different texture plate and a different color in each box. And color neatly, please. Neatness counts. So try to stay within the square when you're using this. Don't just scribble randomly. Okay, so what you might pick up just from looking is that visual texture has a lot to do with pattern. It's a lot of the same thing repeating over and over again. So if you touch your paper now, you'll notice it's still smooth. It's not bumpy. It doesn't feel like our texture plates. But so this is what we've created. We've created visual texture from actual tactile texture. So we can feel the bumps on this, and this is actual texture, and this is visual texture. With our eye, we can see the texture. So on the back of this page, we're gonna focus purely on visual texture, and I want you to practice some visual texture in these three boxes. Now notice, on the first texture page, you had six boxes, because this is quick to do. But this takes a little bit more time. That's really small details that's drawn over and over and over again. So you really, really need to slow down and take your time. You can, what I want you to do is look at these squares and choose some that you wanna repeat and try to repeat within the box neatly with your pencil. So I tried to replicate this one. 
Um, this is probably one of the more easier ones to try to replicate. This one might be another easy one. Um, but I think what I'm going to try to do is the scales. I just might draw them a little bit bigger than they are in that picture. So it's a bumpy line and then it has this little U line at the end of each of the scalloped lines. And so now the next one, it starts at the bottom of each curved line. In this box, I want you to practice the black crayon rub over technique used to create perfect symmetry. So we've been talking about texture. We also, in the first page, we talked about organic and geometric shapes. And so now we're going back to symmetry again. We talked about symmetry in our Day of the Dead Sugar Skulls. We talked about symmetry briefly with our Native American totem poles. And now we're talking about symmetry again with our African culture, more specifically masks. So what I want you to do first when you're going to practice the crayon rub over technique is you're going to fold your paper in half first. You're going to open it back up and you're going to draw with a black crayon pressing hard something on one half of your paper. So I want you to try, I want you to start and draw something that starts at the fold and ends at the fold. You can draw some random things that don't start and end at the fold. But you're only drawing with the black crayon on one side and I want you to press hard, but not so hard that you are breaking the crayon. And I do that sometimes by accident, so I understand sometimes when it's an accident, but let's try to avoid it. Okay, so it doesn't have to be anything special, but I do want you to have something that starts at the fold and ends at the fold. And then you're going to fold it back, and you're going to take a wooden ruler, and you're going to rub your paper. And you can kind of see through the paper and see where your black crayon is, and you're going to rub where you see your black crayon. And this is called the black crayon rub over technique. So we're going to rub it to the other side. So when you open it up, you can see it transfers and it's perfect symmetry. If you missed a spot, just fold it back up and then rub in that spot that you missed. And then the idea is that you'll go back over it with the black crayon so it's the same on both sides and the same darkness. So it's, it's fun to try and we're going to use this technique to create our own mask by using the black crayon rub over technique. So that's why we're practicing it first. Now if you have time and you're fast, you can color this in if you have time, if you have some extra time. If not, just leave it black and white. And then again, just like the last two sections with the sugar skulls and the native, the totem poles, there is a word find at the end of our African culture unit. And here's some words to try and find mixed up and jumbled up in this word find space. <laughs>